Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. Sponsored by a abetterrootplanner.com. In fact, I used this when I went camping, and then I didn't trust it. I didn't believe it. And I was like, oh, no, I shouldn't use my air conditioning during the night. And then I woke up the next morning, and I realized that I could drive all the way home with the battery power that I had left. Oh, so it was right. It was absolutely right, and I was absolutely wrong. But I was in the woods, and I was scared. And brought to you by EcoWare.us. Now, Jesse's wearing a new uh, T-shirt, but this doesn't make sense. It says Rich Rebuilds on it. Uh, yeah, Rich Rebuilds is on EcoWare. Nice. Yeah, so go support us and Rich Rebuilds. And, uh, you know, we plant a tree for every tea, even if it's a Rich Rebuilds t-shirt. So what are we talking about this week, Jess? So a couple weeks ago, Bernie released his $16.3 trillion Green New Deal. So what does it involve? So it calls for decarbonizing transportation and power, the two largest sources of emissions in the U.S. by 2030, which would lower U.S. emissions by 71%. Yeah, the plan says that the cost of doing nothing is far more expensive. And this is going to be paid for by a bunch of things. First one is the income tax revenue of the 20 million new jobs created by his plan. So that'll make $2.3 trillion in tax revenue. Mm -hmm. Then there should be the estimated $1.3 trillion saved through a reduction needed for safety net programs, because obviously those people will now have jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a $1.2 trillion savings from reducing military expenses relating to protecting oil shipping routes. Uh, don't need to protect the oil anymore because it won't be any. And they'll be ending fossil fuel subsidies, and instead they'll be taxing that industry. That is huge because yes. right now we basically just hand the money every year instead of taxing them. And then some more things, which are, I think, pretty cool. Uh, pursuing criminal prosecution of fossil fuel companies, which no one ever seems to want to talk about, but right. they knew things back in the 80s and they kept going with ruining our planet mm -hmm. so yeah let's criminally prosecute them uh complete decarbonization by 2050 new wind solar and geothermal projects there should be a creation of 20 million jobs in building energy efficient cars and boats energy efficiency retrofitting of homes sustainable agriculture engineering research and development and then at the very end of the green new deal there was one little teeny tiny point oh what what it is it was just, what what is it father it was just three words and it was electric school buses okay why school buses uh, because we can convert them to all electric so they don't burn diesel anymore but who cares about a few school buses we were just talking about some really big things there well actually there are four hundred and sixty thousand school buses in the united states now, well, you might be saying lot. oh but you know regular city buses Transit buses, there's only 150,000. Wait a minute, there's three times more school buses than like city buses? Yes. School buses travel more miles as a fleet than transit buses do. And on any given day that school is in session, school buses will transport more passengers than all U.S. domestic airlines combined. Let me get this straight. Kids on school buses traveling, that's more than the number of people traveling on U.S. domestic airplanes going to Florida and going to California and stuff. Yes. And according to a statistical characterization of school bus drive cycles collected via onboard logging systems, School buses, on average, only travel 32 miles per day. So there is plenty of excess battery capacity because most buses won't use all of it. You just said excess battery capacity. What are you talking about? Well, if a school bus only has to travel 32 miles a day and still needs to be able to go on a field trip, that means you're going to have some excess battery power. Wait, so you're talking about converting all of our existing school buses into electric school buses? Yes. Um, that sounds really hard. Actually, there's a great uh, Jalopnik story that talks about how easy it would be to retrofit some of these buses. Because, I mean, these are not luxury cars. You know, they don't have, you know, really nice wood paneling or, you know, very fancy plastic handles and stuff like that. A school bus is basically a metal box with wheels and a motor. I mean, they are not that complicated. I mean, they're made out of I-beams and sheet metal. So, so, I mean, you're just saying basically slap some batteries and a motor on there and take right. out the old diesel engine and the other stuff. There's so much room underneath the bus, um, mostly f just for the exhaust system and just the way that they're manufactured, that there is tons of room for batteries. And of course, you don't need great performance in a bus, so the zero to 60 time really doesn't matter. So they can be fairly underpowered as long as they can make it up most hills. And I guess, I mean, you could just make a few kind of kits, like conversion kits, because there's only 
a few different bus types. And then basically once you figure it out, like, oh, here's the battery kit, here's the motor kit, connect them together, you're good to go. Like, Right. And I mean, think about it this way. Teslas have a seven or eight year battery warranty. Okay. But as these batteries eventually dip below 70 or 80%, um, which is the warranty range uh, degradation, um, they can be recycled into school bus batteries. Because whoa, 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 whoa. If they're no good in an electric car, why would they be good in an electric bus? Well, because A, you can pack way more into the electric school bus. Okay. They can be a lot cheaper since they've already been used for the premium, you know, part of their life, which is, you know, where you're getting the full 100% out of the battery. Uh Um, Once the degradation really kicks in after about seven or eight years. But aren't um, they just trash then? No, you could use them for either battery storage. So like you could use them in, in say, like a power wall or something like that, where it doesn't really matter that they don't have the full range. Or if you pack them onto a bus, you know, it's not as efficient because the energy density isn't necessarily as good, but it doesn't really matter because, again, it's a school bus. So you're still going to get years of life out of the battery after it's used up its life on like a Tesla or a Leaf or something. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, you could recycle uh, the batteries out of a Tesla, either taking uh, just the whole pack out or uh, down to some sub component like the cell level if you really needed to. That's a really good point because school buses are notoriously top heavy with lots of, you know, kids riding high up in the bus and then the really heavy diesel engine, which is high up on the bus. And so a lot of accidents that happen with school buses are rollovers. Right. Now you're talking about slapping batteries onto the lower part of the bus so that you're making the center of gravity lower. And so you're going to drastically reduce the number of the most common accidents, which are rollovers. Right. And, you know, any weight you can add to the bus does make it safer. I mean, school buses are surprisingly safe, especially since most kids don't use seatbelts. All right, now sell me on any other points you have uh, to make me want to do this. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we'd have to devote a whole episode to that. We do. Which we're going to do. So I think that one of the first big points here is that there's going to be far less maintenance on an electric school bus than you would have on a diesel school bus. Okay, but give me some numbers. Don't just say, like, you'll spend a little less. Sure. So according to the CGI uh, VTG EV school bus working group, there would be a $4,400 a year reduction in maintenance costs. What, every year? Per bus. What? Yes. For every bus that you've converted to electric, you're going to be spending $4,400 less on maintenance every year. And that's just maintenance. I don't understand. Maintenance on what? Like, what? how am I saving money? So, I mean, first of all, you don't have the diesel engine. Okay. Next, you have regen braking, which means that you don't have to replace the brakes hardly as often. So, you have huge brake savings. Okay. There's no exhaust system underneath the bus rusting out. There's no timing belts, no water pumps, no head gasket, no oil changes, no air filters. All of the different things that contribute to a high maintenance cost on a diesel bus suddenly melt away. I mean, yes, you still have tires and you have windshield wipers and windshield wiper fluid. But other than that, you just plug the thing in and And you got to clean up some vomit every now and then. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, we save on some maintenance. Do Mm -hmm. we save anything on fuel? Oh, yes. Uh, Because school buses are sitting around most of the time, basically 22 out of 24 hours a day, um, you can charge them off peak. Um, which will save you even more money. So not only does the electric powertrain make them way more efficient, but the electricity is cheaper. So we're talking about a 75% reduction in fuel costs. Now, there is a big hidden bonus to this plan. Oh, okay. And that is V to G, or vehicle to grid. So what vehicle to grid means is that you can take an electric vehicle like your bus and you can plug it into a house or a business or a school and it connects up just like a Tesla Powerwall to the grid. So there'll be a computer on board the school bus's battery that communicates with the grid, and it can either take power out of the battery when the, when the grid needs power, or it can charge the battery when the grid needs to shed some power. Basically, this is doing the job of a peaker plant. I don't get it. What does this mean? Picture solar panels covering the roof of your local school. Okay. Now, the school bus pulls up in the morning with, say, 20% left in its battery. Okay. It lets the kids off at 8.30 a.m., and then it stays plugged into the school in the parking lot, soaking up all that solar power. So if at noon, for some reason, the grid needs more juice because it's too hot out and a lot of air conditioners have turned on, Mm -hmm. um, then the bus's batteries will give the grid power for a while Mm. uh, to even out the load. Then, say at around 2.30, the kids get back on the bus, now with about a 60% battery, and get driven home. So now the buses return to the bus parking lot, and they plug in, either to give their power or to receive it, depending on the grids and the bus's needs. You gotcha. know, obviously, there would be a computer to make sure that you would have enough to complete your route right. with some margin of error. You know, that's not hard to program. It's not rocket science. 
All right, so what did we just make doing all this? I don't get it. You made a huge mobile battery. So oh. all the time it's stabilizing the grid and it's able to store solar and wind energy. Wait, so we've already seen how the Hornsdale battery in South Australia worked to stabilize the grid and save money there. So this would work just the same, except this is a mobile battery. Like these batteries are moving all over the place. Absolutely. So today, if, if your town wanted to install a, a battery station, mm -hmm. um, it would need to acquire some land to do that. You know, either it's some parcel that the town doesn't use or they would have to lease or buy something. Mm -hmm. Um, and with this, you you know, you already have a, a school bus parking lot because every town kind of needs one, um, whether that be the school or it's off somewhere else. That would be your battery station now. That's cool. And there's another hidden bonus in this. Oh, okay. You know, with global climate crisis comes terrible weather events like, you know, floods, fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, droughts, and school buses are now mobile batteries. So you can fill them up with bottled water, health supplies, food, blankets, and what do you have? A mobile first responder brigade complete with power. So basically they can drive to a community in need and then they can supply shelter, food, water, power for communities that have had their power knocked out. And so what you can do now is turn practically any building into a shelter. Okay. Because usually you'd have to say, okay, we're planning ahead right now, and this is going to be a shelter. So we need to make sure that we have a backup power source, some kind of, you know, generator, and we will need to, you know, make sure that it's stocked with food and water um, well ahead of the storm or whatever. Now, with your mobile brigade, you can pull up to the school or, or some other building that wasn't really planned to be a shelter, make it a shelter. Wow. All the buses use their power to keep that shelter running with all the lights and all of the refrigeration and everything else you might need. I love that. I mean, because you can fill them with supplies. I mean, that's what they're good at. Right. Or fill them with people and get them out, you know? Right. Whatever you need to do. School buses are very useful. They're very utilitarian. Yeah. So it seems to me there's another benefit here that we're not talking about, mm -hmm. which is health. There was a study of 61 million people back in 2015 where researchers found that exposure to diesel soot and ground level ozone created by diesel exhaust was linked to higher rates of mortality. And researchers from Georgia State University compared the standardized test scores of kids who rode old, dirtier diesel buses to those who commuted in buses with engines that had been modified or retrofitted to filter out up to 95% of the harmful pollutants. And guess what they found out? They looked at the test results from 2007 to 2015, and they found a significant increase in English scores and a small but notable gain in math scores among the clean bus riding kids. You might be saying like, uh, okay, sure, maybe it affects test scores, but maybe they just lived in, you know, rich neighborhoods. But keep in mind that it is estimated that children who are bused to school spend up to 2,000 hours on board a school bus between grades K through 12. 2,000 hours. 2,000 hours. Wow. And I mean, that's the time that they are on the bus. Wow. And get this, Jimmy Odea, a senior vehicles analyst for the Union of Concerned Scientists said, the scientific literature is really showing with study after study, nearly every organ system in the body is at risk from higher exposure to particulate matter. Everything from the lung diseases that you might typically associate with bad air quality to heart and neurological diseases are being found to increase health risks from more exposure to these pollutants. So so on top of all of this, replacing all of America's school buses with electric buses could avoid an average of 5.3 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions each year. That's just like a little icing on the cake, right? Because I mean, the stuff that we've been talking about is huge, is yeah. super important. I mean, we're talking about big savings for the towns themselves. We're talking about health benefits for students. We're talking about awesome big battery storage facilities that are on wheels that you can bring places. Um, really, really cool stuff. Yeah, but you know what? I know a lot of you out there are listening right now and you're going, Zach and Jesse, again, with this pie in the sky stuff, it's never going to happen. Why are you talking about it? Well, it's actually happening right now. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, he said, these buses will be quieter, more efficient, they are safer, they have seat belts. Now what he's talking about is phase one of a plan that has started with 50 electric buses. And this contract goes out to bid next week and the company CEO and president Thomas Farrell said that the goal is to have placed 1,000 of these new buses, electric buses, 
on the roads within five years. Yeah, so Virginia wants to replace all their school buses with electric ones by 2030. And here is a really great quote. Where they are locally in garages and parking lots, we can take that electricity back and put it on the grid. And that is from Thomas Farrow. They already know that the V2G stuff is going to be cool. Yeah, I mean, Pharrell referenced a study that found that replacing one diesel bus with an electric model can save a school district $700 a month in gas and maintenance costs. $700 a month. Right. Name me a school district that couldn't use that money. Exactly. I mean, a single school bus gets about six miles to the gallon and create as much carbon monoxide as five cars, according to data provided by Dominion Energy. Air quality inside the bus is often more harmful than it is outside the bus. Pharrell said, when they sit there, the diesel fumes can pour into the bus. We can get rid of all that. So it's going to be much healthier for the kids and the drivers. Save the school system money and reduce their carbon footprint. It's better for everybody. So, you know, we just went through a bunch of different points and you may have said, oh, Zach and Jesse, I don't know about some of those points. Here's Virginia. Here is them actually talking about all the points we just discussed. Oh, and it's not just Virginia. In July, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Cory Booker introduced the Clean School Bus Act in the Senate, and Representative Johanna Hayes introduced it in the House of Representatives. So this would authorize up to $1 billion in spending to help districts replace diesel school buses with electric ones. So get this, children riding to school on buses every year, they travel more than 4 billion miles each year, according to NHTSA, and those rides cost nearly $10 billion a year. That's wow. according to the National School Transportation Association. So you might be watching at home and saying, you know, but Zach and Jesse, that's a billion dollars if that bill passes of my hard earned tax money. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what, like 11 F-35s that we could buy. Actually, it's only about three F-35s because you have to put maintenance contracts on them. So, oh, so with the maintenance, it's only th it's only three. Yeah, because the most of the cost is maintenance and fuel and stuff. The one billion dollars would either get you basically to start electrifying the entire country's bus system, or it could get you three F-35s. So you're saying that four hundred and sixty thousand school buses cost the same as three jets? So to be fair, that's just to get the ball rolling. That billion dollars, mm -hmm. it's going to cost something like twenty five thousand dollars or so to convert a diesel bus to an electric bus once the economies of scale get going. So we're looking at approximately 460,000 buses mm -hmm. times $25,000 a bus. That equals $11.5 billion. But keep in mind, we're gonna be saving $3 billion a year in fuel and maintenance. Yeah, that's a really good point because if you just look at your upfront cost of 11.5, you might be like, stick a shock, don't wanna do it. Right. But yeah, when you factor in the fuel and maintenance and just that alone, it pretty much pays for itself in four years. And there are so many other hidden savings, you know, things that don't show up on the balance sheet, but do actually happen in real life for sure. Yeah, I mean, you're also getting a mobile battery that can store wind, solar, and save money by leveling the grid. I mean, what's that value? It's not building a new peaker plant. Right. It's the millions that would have been spent to buy or lease the land to put a mega pack on. And it will actually be able to earn its own money, Right. right? I mean, the Hornsdale battery pack was able to pay itself off in three years. And that's just a battery that sits there. It doesn't drive children to school. Right. It just sits there. It just collects wind and solar energy and distributes it to the grid. Right. It just stabilizes the grid. That's all it does. You'd be having this on wheels. Or how about this? The disaster relief that we're talking about. I mean, you would now be able to turn any building into a shelter. And let's just put the cost of one major cleanup. So if we remind ourselves of what it costs to clean up Hurricane Katrina, that cost $114.5 billion in recovery. Right. So when a, when a horrible thing happens, we spend a lot of money trying to help. And these converted school buses could go a long way to making that happen for people during crises. Mm -hmm. And there's another hidden savings. Yeah. And, and this one is, to me, it's, it's almost insidious. What is it? So by age 35, Every extra IQ point you have should, on average, earn you $810 more per year, according to the American Enterprise Institute. Now, research has shown that poor air quality can lead to a decrease in IQ, which in one study found a decrease of as much as 6.6 .6 points. Wait a minute. So you're saying that the IQ points lost by kids riding diesel school buses could mean actual less money that they'd earn? Well, I mean... <laughs> 
That is if you put, you know, the earnings of a person just to their IQ points. That's not to say the, sure. you know, the enjoyment of their life. That's just putting like, that's just money. But I mean, you're saying that could earn them $5,000 less per year. Right. I mean, let's say you have a job that earns you $45,000 a year. Now you're making $40,000. Wow. All because... And, and it goes the other All way, because right? you rode a bus. All because you rode a bus. Now, that is just the monetary value that we can kind of equate based on IQ, which is something that we can kind of measure. But that doesn't go into, you know, just your whole life and, and the quality of your entire life. And that's just IQ. Right. I mean, we've, we've said it many times before on the show. You can't put a value on health. So, I mean, keeping the air clean for millions of children who are sitting on buses and waiting at bus stops or standing in school parking lots full of idling diesel buses for thousands of hours during their formidable years is invaluable. But if we had to put some kind of price on it, we'd look to occupational health studies. Now, these studies are of railroad, dock, trucking, and bus garage workers who are exposed to high levels of diesel exhaust over many years, which consistently demonstrate a 20 to 50% increase in the risk of lung cancer or mortality. And so it's important to keep in mind that if we are talking about 460,000 buses, um, we're also talking about at least 460,000 bus drivers. True. I mean, we're talking about bus drivers who are going to be driving the bus longer than the kids are going to school, you know, the 12 years of schooling or 13 years of schooling that the kids are going to get. Um, but again, those are adults driving the bus. Those are not little children. Those are not kindergarten aged uh, children that are going to be getting on this bus, this diesel bus, and then getting out of the bus, walking right past the tailpipe on their way to school every single day. Now, I think we've laid out a pretty good argument for doing this, but right. I, I still know that there's a lot of people out there who are going to say, you know what, though, this Bernie plan is going to cost a billion dollars, or if we do the whole plan, it's going to cost trillions of dollars. Right. And I think a lot of people immediately turn off whenever you talk about the government spending money to solve a problem. Right. They just immediately like, I'm not spending my hard-earned tax money on that. And I think the problem comes from this. We were never taught in school how government works well i mean i there's the legislative branch there's the judicial branch and there's the uh, executive branch sure and they all have checks and balances on each other and the constitution and the bill of rights and well let me ask you this uh-huh if you go to the hardware store and you get the wrong color paint when you get home because mm -hmm. they mixed it wrong what do you do I drive right back to the hardware store. I give them the paint and I say, this paint is the wrong color. This is ridiculous. I demand a refund and I I want the right color paint. Okay. And uh, that gets taken care of, right? Absolutely. Okay. What happens when you get out of college? You've had all this great education, mm -hmm. right? And uh, your city or town or your state is doing something you don't like. I would complain to my friends. Good. I would complain to my family. Uh-huh. I might write something on Facebook. Okay. Is there I something thought, else I, I'm supposed to well, do? Well, I thought you were taught all about government in school. Why don't Why don't you know what to do? Um, there's a. Isn't there a government working for you? There's. Don't a, they take your tax dollars? There's and, a bill. I'm just the bill. Do you see where I'm going with this? We don't know what to do, so we get angry every year that goes by in our lives. We get angrier and angrier at this government that. We don't know how it works. We don't know how to interact with it. We might write them a hateful letter. We might show up at a meeting and yell at somebody, but we don't know how to actually get anything done. I mean, the only interaction that you have with the government, if you're a law-abiding citizen, is your taxes. I mean, that's just about it. I mean, you, I mean, it's it's what the library and school and taxes. But I mean, taxes is what you're going to be doing the most you of. You do it every day. I mean, when you buy something, you're paying taxes. Right. Uh, at the end of the year, you're paying your taxes. You're always paying taxes. And I know you're getting upset. It's like, I pay all this money to you guys, but you never listen to me. Right. And so when you hear someone like Bernie say, we'd like to spend some money to fix a problem, you go, oh yeah, you want to just spend my money on something? Right. You don't listen to what I want. And I get that. And that's part of this problem is we have a lot of angry people out there. This money's going to get spent one way or the other. It's not like we're not going to have a government, right? We have a government that spends trillions of dollars. So whether you hear about the bill or you don't, there's trillions of dollars being spent as we speak. Right. But you hear about this one bill and this billion dollars and it sticks in your craw and you're like, I'm upset about spending this money on this thing. But let's let's take another look at this. Mm -hmm. You know some kids, right? Maybe you got grandkids or kids yourself or your nieces and nephews, or those kids down the street. Well, I mean, let's forget about kids for a second. Electric okay. buses will lower your electricity bill. They'll actually lower your taxes. I mean, think about this for a second. What happens during the summer? Kids aren't going to school. The buses are sitting there all day long in the summer. 
Right. And so they're basic, you know, what's happening to the diesel buses right there? They're just degrading. They're just rusting. They're just falling into nothing. If they were hooked up to the grid and they were able to capture all of the summer sunshine and charge it up during the day and distribute it during the night, there you go. Your town could very easily become its own power source. Exactly. You've got all these town buildings, schools, municipal buildings, garages, which could be covered with solar panels and putting all that solar energy into mobile batteries. And now you don't have to pay a utility company for your electricity. You can, your town can very easily, as soon as they have these electric buses, just say, okay, we're going to become our own utility. Exactly. We have the infrastructure. Maybe we need to, you know, build a couple more batteries. But these buses really have a big chunk of energy storage right here, and we could probably do it. And you might be saying, well, Zach and Jesse, that's crazy. I've never heard of any municipality owning their own power company. But lots of them do. Right. My friend has an electricity bill of six cents per kilowatt hour. I, on the other hand, have an electric bill of 22 cents per kilowatt hour. And we live about 15 miles apart. Yep. It's his municipality that is giving him that insane, insane benefit. Yep. And if you have an electric car, like we were doing the math, he could have paid for a Model 3 with the amount of savings that he would have gone from his gas-burning truck to a Model 3. He would have been able to pay just with the gas savings alone. He would have been able to pay for that car. That is what we're talking about. The, you know, and, and that is just your electric bill. Right. We're not getting to the taxes because electric buses are cheaper to maintain and they're cheaper to fuel. It's just that simple. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Right. This is just one little piece of that plan, one little idea that if you really think about it, saves so much money and makes so much sense. But yet our media doesn't delve into this. You no. don't hear stories about it. Why? Because there's not people yelling at each other. That's what they want. The story is all about keeping people angry at each other. They don't want you solving problems. And that's what we need to switch to is a system where we're just talking to one another and coming up with great solutions. Wouldn't that be a much better place to live in than a world where we're just yelling at each other all the time about you're wrong. And in a place where we're fumigating our students as they get on the bus. Yeah. Just I mean, it insane. should be a no-brainer. It should be Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians. It shouldn't matter. This plan makes sense across the aisle and across countries. Anyway, I hope it makes sense to you. If it does, contact your local school committees, contact your local representatives, and tell them, hey, I want electric school buses. And you know what? If you're thinking about presidential candidates, we don't care who you vote for, but make sure that the candidate you're voting for is on board with stuff like this. So when they come to your town and they start saying, hey, can I have your vote? Say, well, let me, wait, hey, hang on a second. Have you heard about converting to electric school buses? Because the person who does that has got my vote. Right. And if they hear that from enough people, they'll go, uh, what's this thing about electric school buses? Right, add that to my plan. Anyway, we hope you really enjoyed this. Um, if you liked it, hit the like button. Again, I don't know if that has any bearing on anything. Well, but, the, the, but you know what? It does have a bearing. I do see the number. It, it makes, makes you me, feel good. It makes me feel good. Well, the other thing is that's how we as YouTubers uh, grow our channel. And by growing our channel, we get out to more people and we get our ideas and our thoughts out to more. So when you subscribe, it's free to do and it really does help us grow. Maybe hit the button. Yep. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll see you next week. Now you now know. You know.